All right, you guys, so this is Ross. Today we're in my kitchen because we're gonna preserve some of our pepper harvest. We've been doing um, really well this year with our peppers, and I actually have some preserved peppers here. I have it some ball jars that I've done actually um, a couple weeks ago, and I managed to actually already finish an entire jar. I've been eating these like mad. They're so, so good. And when they're preserved in white vinegar and water with a little bit of garlic and salt, I tell you, they come out so wonderful that uh, I figured it'd be a crime not to make this video for you guys. And I'm not gonna, you know, do a step-by-step -step of the whole cooking process, but this is so simple that anybody can do it. And I'll put the recipe down in the, the description. But uh, we're also gonna talk about our tomatoes because we have a number of dry tomatoes here that I have been putting in the dehydrator and drying them whole because we're gonna preserve those actually in olive oil. And I really got this idea from, you know, particular brands that will do the same thing. They sun dry their tomatoes and then they preserve them in olive oil and herbs. And I tell you, they come out so fantastic. I really love cooking with things like tomato paste. I love cooking with these or putting them on sandwiches and different things because they have such an amazing umami flavor that gives your food some next level flavor, you know? So I, I've been impressed with the tomatoes done this way and there's so many ways to preserve tomatoes. And I've really been impressed, you know, this year I finally got this down perfect, I think, is preserving these peppers, particularly these uh, shishito peppers have come out so good in this method that I'm just like blown away. I think they're even better, you know, than grilling them or, or roasting them, sauteing them. These uh, shishito peppers here, I think they're called the Hikara, if I'm not mistaken. Oh man, you have to go on my Instagram or Facebook. You'll find the variety name there because we talked about it. But um, this variety is so incredibly productive and the amount of shishito peppers I've gotten in such a small area is just insane. Um, really highly recommend it. This is from Fedco, this variety. And I just think with the little bit of heat that they have, because I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking out the seeds the best I can, but there's some seeds left over and that's kind of where that little bit of heat comes from in these. And yeah, if there's a little bit of seeds in there, it's not the end of the world. I try to you know, leave the peppers whole on the bottom because then when you take them up out of the jar, you're gonna place them in the jar kind of with the bottoms down like this. And then this is kind of creating a nice little cone, nice little shell for like a bunch of the juice. You know, the, this vinegar that's infused with, you know, some garlic in there. Um, I also have salt and I also have the, the heatness or the heat, I should say, the heatness from the peppers. And that juice, that vinegar that comes out of here creates the most amazing flavor on like a sandwich. I love to put them on my tacos, whatever it is you're eating. It's just incredible. So that's the variety I just want to mention. And then really quickly, as I said, we just cut off the tops, you know, these green parts here, I'll make a cut. Then I'll use this little spoon to dig out some of the seeds and then I'll put them on the tray and I'll try to align them like this, whatever. And then soon, before I put them in the oven, drizzle on the olive oil, give them a little bit of sea salt, and then I'll cook them in the oven. I'll turn them as soon as they turn, you know, brown or slightly blackened on the top. And then I turn them again and again, waiting for that color. Once that color shows up on both sides, then I know they're done. I don't peel the skin. I know some people do that, but once they're done like that, I just take them out and put them in the jars. And once I've got them arranged, it's very simple with the recipe down in the description. All you need, guys, is a little bit of garlic. You need the right amount of salt. And then the ratio of the vinegar to the water is really critical, I think, for pickling anything. So pickling my tomatoes, I've talked about this. It's essentially, if you're gonna use three cups of liquid, two of the cups should be water and one of the cups should be vinegar. And I use distilled white vinegar. Um, I guess the brand might be, you know, something specific or important, but most white vinegars taste relatively the same. And that's kind of it. You know, um, going off of that ratio of the amount of vinegar to water, if you get that right, 
in combination with the right amount of salt that goes with the same ratio. So I'm gonna put that, re that recipe of mine in the description, but you just follow the same ratio. So if I have, you know, instead of having one cup of vinegar, it's a half a cup of vinegar, well then you cut all the rest of the ingredients in half. So you cut the salt in half, you cut the garlic in half. If I was doing pickles, I would cut the, sp the pickling spice in half, and that's it. So something like this is, it's way less than a cup. I think it's actually 0.25 of a cup of vinegar to a half a cup of, of water. And all together is only 0.75 um, of a cup of liquid in, a, in those little pint, I think they're pints or cups. I don't know. Anyway, point is that's, that's the simple and easy recipe there. Now what's nice about these tomatoes is I put them in the dehydrator and you know, you could sun dry them if you have the perfect climate, not everybody does, but when you get them perfect and you, you peel off the skin, I, I actually took a toothpick before I put them in the dehydrator, poked a hole in them so that I could really easily peel the skin. And you don't wanna dry them so much that they are just so hard. And then if you were to try to peel the skin, it doesn't come off because the skin is now sticking to the interior. So this, this gets, you know, there's a little bit of finesse to this, knowing when they're done, they're of different sizes. It can be a bit tricky, but this is really what you're looking for here. And they kind of pops like that. And unveiled, when you take the skin off, is the pulp of the tomato. And this pulp here, guys, is so good. There's so much umami in this that it's incredible. Um, you know, obviously you can eat the skin if you want, but typically I think it takes away from this. And if I eat this right now for you guys, yeah, there's so much tomato flavor in that that it's crazy. It's insane. Um, so that's what we're looking for here is something along those lines. I even have some green ones here and the inside is green rather than that dark, deep red. Let's try this. This will be interesting. This is, I think, a lucky tiger or green tiger. This is a green tiger, I think, tomato. Wow. Very intense tomato flavor, but it's very fruity at the same time. So what this is gonna do, when we dry them like this, and we have that intense flavor, we take off the skin, we put them in a jar like this. I, this has already started, so this is already you know purchased from the store. I just keep adding to this. What I did yesterday was I made myself cod. I had these cod steaks, cooked them in the pan, covered them in all kinds of different tomato products, paste. I used the oil from, um, from these preserved tomatoes here and made myself the most amazing cod. It really came out fantastic. There's all this olive oil in it and there's all this oil that was infused with the tomatoes. And by adding in also tomato paste and also my own tomatoes as well, I didn't just add my, uh, just the paste. It's such a rich tomato flavor in this cod that it creates this uh, almost like a terre for ramen. So you have, you know, instead of having like um, your base for your ramen is like a, a garlic oil or a sesame oil or some kind of particular oil that's very salty and has a lot of umami in it, I'm using tomatoes. And these tomatoes, I'm telling you, it gives it a different depth, a different type of ramen. It's you know very tomato based, but I'm telling you, it's uh, it's so good. At least using that infused oil. And what I will do, so a lot of these, I'm going to add them in here, or I'll do this separate in a different jar because I'm not going to have enough room probably to fill this whole thing up. Well, I'll have excess room. But as I go, I'm going to just keep adding olive oil to this. And then that olive oil is going to continue to get infused in this product, in this jar. So anytime I want to have a, an, a, you know, an olive oil infused with tomatoes and some herbs, I just pour out some of the oil. And then if I am running low on oil, I just fill it back up. So I have this machine almost of like this awesome 
uh, olive oil that's infused with the tomatoes, but also they're just very good. You know, when you preserve them like this and you eat the tomato itself, it's so mind-blowingly good. And personally, um, this, when I found out about this last year, I didn't even know this existed as a product. I was like, holy crap, I gotta, I gotta make this next year. So that, that's been my goal this year is to learn how to do this. And I think this is the best way. I wouldn't even recommend, if you're really interested, I probably wouldn't even recommend cutting them in half, the tomatoes, and then dehydrating them. I would dehydrate them whole. I think this just is a better way of doing it. Um, and then of course, you gotta get it to that perfect level of dryness to where the inside still is a bit moist. But then when you put it in this olive oil and you have enough salt in there as well, you gotta have enough salt to make sure that's kind of a, acting as a preservative. You're just making sure that, uh, you know, you're not gonna get sick and whatnot and you're gonna have an amazing product. So I would say probably at some point, maybe I shouldn't add to this, maybe I should start my own or something or freeze them or whatever it is, but you know, uh, this is again like a, an infused tomato oil machine. So I'm a big fan. Both of these methods, I'm gonna start doing the peppers with not just the shishitos, but we have some Jimmy Nardello and Carmen up here. I even have some other ones that we just are trying for the first time. This is like a French pepper here that's very productive. I even have some habaneros we're gonna try if I can withstand that heat. I think it should be a little bit more chill because typically with the habanero or typically with hot peppers when you process them, the, the heat does go down a bit. So maybe I will be able to eat them. Um, if not, I'll give them to a friend that really loves that heat. So anyway, guys, we will we'll talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this. This is such a, I think, I wish somebody taught me about this stuff when I started growing peppers and tomatoes because this is like, even better, I think, than making sauce or salsa with these tomatoes is actually having these preserved tomatoes there um, as a product, I think, goes a long way. And this ramen that I've made is, oh my goodness. And, you know, for me and a lot of people, it can be a bit daunting. You know, having those right ingredients for a good ramen is not easy. And uh, that's just one simple way to do it. So we'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care and uh, we'll catch you for the next one.